appreciate that good singing. And uh, I believe they meant that, don't you? Yeah. I think singers just ought to sing from their heart. All that big facade and all that entertaining and all that. That's not what we're here to do, to draw attention to ourselves. We're here to point people to Christ. Amen. We're here to influence people to come into his house and worship him. He's the only one worthy of our worship today. Over the book of Revelation, you'll find sometimes you read over there, John, the beloved apostle. Now, he's the apostle of love. You know what he did? After he received the revelation of God, the visions of God about Jesus Christ, he bowed down at the angel's feet and wanted to worship the angel. You know what the angel said? He said, get up, worship God. Don't you worship me. I'm just a being just like you. I'm a created being. He said, worship God. I think that's what we're here to do today, isn't it? Let's worship God. I don't know if, uh, uh, how, how many times you'll be here present with us. I don't know if you'll come each and every week, but I hope you will, and I pray that you do. And uh, Wednesday night, what a service we had. If a funeral service can't be a good service, we had a revival service. That's kind of how I wanted to go for me when it's my time to go on and be promoted to the glory world. Uh, I want that last service to be a send-off. Me too, I want the choir to be full. I think every seat up there was full on Wednesday night. Brother David Sawyer went to be with the Lord. Amen. For those that did not hear, pray for Sister Mila. Uh, she'll be moving to uh, just north of Atlanta, Georgia, Roswell. And she'll be there with her son. Thank God for a good son who would take a mother in. And uh, there's something God about that. I just like the sound of that. And so uh, let's just uh, pray for her. Pray for the extended family. You know one. When the uh, loved one is passed on, especially at 63 years young, uh, we must continue to pray for them and think yes. about them and contact them and let them know that we love them so very, very much. All right? Our text verse this morning is Psalm 46, verse number 10. Be still. I think if you could teach your young people anything, your children anything, is to listen more than they talk. Amen. Mm -hmm. If they could ever just listen, stop long enough, pause, be still, and know, and that goes for us big kids too, right? Yes. That I am God. Woo! There's yes. none, of us, none other beside me, he said. And so we're talking about this morning the I am God. We preached about the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Last week's message was on, I am the resurrection and the life. The scripture says there, you'll have no resurrection without Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This morning, a little bit different message, but it's still on this I am God. He says, be still and know that I am, underline that, I am God. If you want to know who God is, he is the I am God that Moses told Pharaoh, uh, who has sent you? And God told him to tell him, I am has sent you. He is the everlasting God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning of the letter of the alphabet of the Greek language. He is the ending uh, letter of the alphabet. He's the, uh, the be beginning or the birth of your life to the ending of your life and everything in between. Amen. And so he's even in your future. He'll be there when you get there. And by the way, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. God's already in your future. Yes. And Amen. so how do you have that kind of peace? <laughs> he said, be still. Amen. Just get along with God. Have a God and I time. Pray unto the Lord until you find that perfect peace. Yes. Isaiah 26 tells us. He said that perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. And so this morning, he has secured, he has purchased our salvation. He has secured our future and you know, there's just too many worried people, anxious people, careful people. And the Lord plainly says in His Word, Philippians 4 and 6, be careful or worried or troubled or anxious over anything. Amen? But by prayer and supplication, don't forget this, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto the Lord. And so we live in a stressful uh, life. We're, we're living in a fast-paced society. And basically what God is saying today, are you listening? Time out. Stop, pause, Sunday is my day. I want you to worship me. I want you to come apart from the cares of this life. I heard one preacher say it this way, come apart from the world or you'll come apart at the seams. Don't you believe that? Yes. 
And so this is our time out with the Lord. We spend each and every Sunday. I love it. Yeah. I just can't yeah. wait to get here. I'm the last one who leaves. And I just love shaking hands with all God's people. And, you know, instead of taking our frustrations out on everyone else in this world in our life, here's what we need to do. We just need to take our burdens to the place of prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to take it to the Lord. And I think he's a big enough God to handle all of our problems. Amen. Amen. I love him for that. And I thank you. Listen, there's just so many, many problems in the world that's unnecessary. There's domestic disputes. There's, a, uh, there's angry people. There's road rage. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But what are we to do? We are to take these problems to the Lord. Now, if you're having these problems, these te technical difficulties, we're living in a technical age. Am I, am I right about that? Yeah. What are we to do at this point? I tell you, uh, be still and know that I am the Lord. I'm talking about this hustle, bustle world that we live in. We just have to take time out and have prayer time. That's right. I know when I'm not caught up in my prayers. I know when I'm tipping the scale in the fleshly direction. How about you? Yes. And so this morning, let's just let's just listen to God, okay? Let's just pause. Let's just time out. Number one, I am the I am God is there for you when no one else is there for you. Uh, if you look up in Hebrews chapter number thirteen, verse number five, let your conversation that word there means conduct, your way of life, your lifestyle. Let it be without covetousness. In a materialistic society, that's sometimes often difficult because you see things that you want uh, and, and it's not meant for you. God's, it, it may not be the right timing for you. But he says, and be content with such things as you have, for he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What he's trying to say, if you read all that in the context, God is enough. Yes. If you have God, That's right. God will take care of you. Hey. He will provide for you. He will protect you. He will be your ever-present help in a time of need, as we read in Psalm number 46 this morning. And so man will let you down. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that man will roll over you and smile while he does it? That's right. Have you ever noticed that we have a cruel side, a nature that's not necessarily of the Lord, and so man will use and abuse you? God will never do that. He loves you today. Amen. And so uh, his ways are not like man. Have you ever thought about the root word for manipulate? Man's in that too. I thought about that this week. Manipulations of man and the manhandling and the panhandling and all the power grabbing and all of that. You know, man spends a lot of his time doing all those things, trying to get ahead. I don't think it's wrong to get ahead. I think all of us want to get ahead. But we do not need to do it at the expense of someone who's working hard to get to where they need to go. And so I spoke to a man this morning. He's a hard worker. He provides for his family. And I said, thank you, sir, uh, for your hard work. He said, last week I wasn't here, Pastor. I was working. I said, thank you for providing for your family. Thank you for doing that. I think God honors that hard work, does he not? God will bless. What else does he have to bless if we're not busy and serving and living our life out to the fullest? What can God bless? If there's a zero on our part, God has nothing to bless. He has nothing to bless. So we need to let this sink in our, our ears this morning that God wants to bless us, but God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. Right. He has nothing to bless. Right. And so you do all that you can do, and when all that you can do has been done, God will give you strength, God will give you hope, God will give you confidence, God will give you faith and stability and security and power. Think on these things now. Be still and know. That's why we're all here this morning to hear what God has to tell us. Yeah. Be still and know that I am, that I am God, the creator God of the universe. He's the creator. He's the sustainer. He's the redeemer. All in between. Everything that we need is provided to us by our God. We're not to strive with man. No, we're not to be, uh, if you will, angry with one another when things don't go our way. No, listen, get along with God and hear from heaven. And, and listen, don't try to steer your own life. Let God guide you. Yes. Let God be the wisdom that he wants to be in showing you exactly what he wants you to do. I'm talking about each step of the way. I'm talking about every move that you make, every word that you say, every syllable and articulation of speech and action he wants you to know about it. he wants to do it through you and i ask him often i say lord every syllable let it be from you 
every articulation, every uh, er every emphasis that needs to be placed. Please, Lord, you're the hyphenation. Uh, you're, you're, you're the comma. You're everything. You're the exclamation point. You know, God can do that. He can provide for you. He can protect you. Yes. Did you know he can share his presence with you? That's enough. Yes. You ever been where the Lord's presence was? Yes. His presence moved in here on Wednesday night. I can assure you that. Yes. There was so much love in this room. After the service, Sister Neal was hugging all the ways. I think there was a few kisses on the cheek down here. I said, my goodness alive, I've never seen so much love in my life, especially at a funeral. It was wonderful. Nothing like it on the planet. What is that? That's the love of God. The greatest message that's ever been preached in this pulpit, or any other pulpit for that matter, is a love of God message. Amen. We need God's love. Yes. We need love for one another. Yes. And so none of these things are obtainable Amen. without uh, standing, being still, and listening, and for the voice of God. And sometimes God says, you know when we ask Him in our private prayer time, our devotion to the Lord through the week, sometimes God says yes. Y'all are notice this, how God works. Yes. Sometimes God says emphatically, no. He knows what's <laughs> best for you. Yeah. I'm kind of glad He had answered all my uh, prayer requests. Yes. We might be living on Pluto or Mars <laughs> or Saturn or somewhere. Missionaries to uh, Nigeria or somewhere. Uh, Liberia, right back here. All right, Brother Richie. Yes, his daughter's here this morning. Let's see. I'm going to try to say your name. Help me, Brother Richie. Richland. Richland. Isn't that sweet? She's all the way from Liberia. This is her first service in an American church. Amen. Yeah. That's a blessing. Welcome. Let's give God a hand. Welcome, Richland. God bless you. You know, if we don't appreciate the freedoms and the liberties we had in America, God will send other people that will. That's right. If we don't work hard and serve the Lord, you know what? God will He'll fill the church up with people from far away lands. I've asked Him to do that many times. I said, Preacher, are you saying that I'm not working hard? I'm not saying that. I just know there's some people that are appreciative in this world. That's right. God knows how to love through His people. I want to be one of those people He uses. How about you? Yeah. I want to say, secondly, dependence in the I am God means reverencing God enough to patiently wait for his instruction. The hardest lesson in a pastor, I don't know about a people, but I can tell you from the pastor's perspective, the hardest thing I have to do is to wait, wait on God. Yeah. I mean, I pray and I pray and I pray and I say, you're God. You know, and, and sometimes I have to watch myself because it sounds almost as if I'm tempting the Lord in my prayer. And my mother would say, I've heard many times her say to me, you're tempting the Lord. She heard me pray or uh, she heard my speech or she saw my, my, my uh, spirit and she told me flat out, she was a good preacher. She wasn't in, in the pulpit, but she was a good preacher. Amen. I've heard my dad, we're talking about reverencing the Lord enough uh, to, to uh, uh, you know, patiently wait for the answer to our prayer request. I heard my dad make this statement in the pulpit. He said that we are to be a reverent people. He said that many times he quotes those verses about that we're to do all things decently and in order. I heard those verses in my mind and I'm thinking, you know what? Our forefathers would almost roll over in their graves as they knew what was going on in the name of Christ today. In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we are. We're living in too fast a society. I think some, sometimes the churches of Jesus try to adopt some of the ways and the methods of the world. And they're influencing us more than we're influencing them. And God said, hold it, time out. You better do things my way. Amen. You better wait a moment. You better not jump out ahead of me. We're living in that fast paced life. I've been in those big cities where in that left lane, there is an express lane. You have to have some, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you have to pay so much money to travel. In. And you go super fast through there. And, uh, but you know what? That's, that's how people are living today. They want things instant. They want instant gratification. They want microwavable lifestyle. They want it to happen right now. God, why aren't you answering my prayer? I think we pray amiss sometimes. And we, listen, we need to get along with God and we need to wait upon Him. Even Jesus Christ in Luke 5, 16, He said, He withdrew Himself into the wilderness and prayed. That's right. I wonder why He went out there into the creation because 
He wanted to be with the things that he created. You ever thought about it? I mean, he wanted to reflect on what he and the Father had done when he spoke light into existence. Let there be. And there was. He breathed into man and made them a, a living soul. That's what makes us different than the animals. You know that, right? That, that we have a living soul. We'll live forever somewhere. And so the thought is today that, you know, uh, God has been good to all of us. We need to take a time out with the Lord. I love going out into creation myself. Uh, I, I love seeing the animals. I love seeing the beautiful creation, even the creation. The Bible says all of her are without excuse because in the creation, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection is preached in our seasons of death, of the leaves and the trees and such. Can you believe it's September the 1st today? Moves on, doesn't it? Yeah. It stand, the time doesn't stand still for anyone. And so the greatest thing that we can teach our children is, listen, there are different seasons in life. Yes. When we're young, we're to, we're to pay close attention. We're to obey our, 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 our authorities. We're to obey our teachers and our instructors. And we're to catch the thoughts that they have taught us. I said about Brother David, he caught what was taught here in this church, and he did. He latched hold of truth in his life, and he zoomed up to the top uh, in the high ranks of the Lord. Why? Because he wasn't afraid to listen. He wasn't afraid to take time out. Sister Mina said about him, he just kept his nose in the Word of God. He read the Bible not just once a day, but all during the day. Amen. He had a walk with God. Do you have? How's our walk with God, family? Church family, how is our walk with God? And so... You know, we, we go out into the woods. We go out in recreation with our family and, uh, you know, to find those quiet moments and uh, to see the beautiful creation of the Lord. I think that's something good. I think that's something good we should do in our high-tech world that we're living to take a, take a time out and say, hey, hold it. I'm going to get along. We'll get out here and I'm going to bear the, uh, the elements and I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I'll take my grandkids camping. Is that all with everybody? And well, I made a fatal mistake this last time. I took the two-year-old <laughs> child, and uh, in the middle of the night, about midnight, an uncontrollable scream went out. It sounded like someone was uh, killing somebody. And she woke up, and she <laughs> she didn't know where her mama was. And me and Miss Crane, uh, of course, Miss Crane got up. But anyway, uh, she got up to tend to the baby, and uh, didn't get any more sleep the rest of the night, tossing and turning, what night. And, but, uh, you know, it taught me a great principle. Even children need that quiet time. They need time out. You know, we, we, we hear about this, this term, time out. But it is something to it. It's a principle that they just need to be quiet. They don't need to say anything. They just need to think about what they've done and what they need to do. And then I'm going to say thirdly, in all the calamities and maladies of life, you must know God is an I am God. Look at verse number one. God is our refuge. He is, present tense, our refuge, a place where you can go and get away. He's, he's someone you can turn to. He's someone that's very approachable. He's someone that you can, uh, you know, uh, you, can, you can go to in a time of need. He is a current 21st century God. He's up to date. Yes. He is up to date. And, and then it goes on to say uh, in verses three, it says, though the waters are of roar and trouble, and the mountain shake with swelling. Uh, God is there for us in these times. I think about the people on the East Coast this morning. I'm thinking about that number five hurricane. I don't know what it's going to do. I haven't heard much of the weather reports. But you know what? If God brought you to it, he will bring you through it. We need to pray for those good people. We have family, friends over there on that east side. We pastored over there in North Carolina. But God wants you like Moses when he was brought between the devil and the deep Red Sea, not the Blue Sea. But when he was out there, you know, there was a, the greatest army on earth. The, the, the Egyptian army was behind them. And uh, there was the Red Sea in front of them. And, uh, you know, uh, Moses wanted to know what I knew from God. Have you ever been in a frustrated moment like that? That you almost cried and you screamed to God. Sure. Be careful about screaming to God. Uh, Be careful. Be careful. God's yeah. listening. Don't get angry at God. He, he's your protector. He's your provider. You don't get, get mad at him. That's right. Did you know what God told Moses? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God parted the waters and they walked through. That's right. 
east Amen. wind came and blew the waters up and they walked through it dried up the ground there was no mud for them to, I imagine they picked up a fish or two along the way and fried it on, the, <laughs> on the river bank over on the other side just like our God to do that you ever thought about the little boy who had the five loaves and two fishes and at the end of the miracle and fed all those 5,000 people and and, and there was more. That was just the men. And the, and the, top of the, the ladies and the children were extra. There's probably about 20,000 people there. God fed them all that day. And there was 12 basket loads left over. Have you ever thought who and who was it that received those uh, 12 baskets full? Some have said, well, they went to all the disciples. There was 12 of them. But, you know, my way of thinking, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking again. I think the little boy went home. I think the twelve apostles took those twelve baskets to the uh, to the family who gave the little lunch. Amen. 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 God worked a miracle with just a little a little. God made a lot. A little this much when God is in it. Amen. Amen. And so today, uh, you know, there was uh, the heathen were raging out there in the children of Israel. They were wandering around the wilderness. They had Janus and Jambres out there. They had the mixed multitude out there. And they were saying, don't listen to Moses. He don't know what he's talking about. Let's go back into Egypt. We had leeks and melons and garlics and all that stuff over there. The onions and, whoa, what did good? Yeah, you were living in slavery too. Hey, Christian, hey, don't let the devil make you look back in your past life and say, oh, I had it so good over there and sin it. Egypt's a type of sin. You were enslaved over there, and you know you were. You were set free by the grace of God. Don't you go back. You keep pressing towards the mark for the prize of the calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And here it said, listen, in verse number five, God shall help her. And that right early, he's right in the middle of it, in the midst of what we're doing here. He says, she shall not be moved. Don't be moved. You know you're in the will of God. Draw a circle around your life. Don't you leave it. Don't you get out of the will of God. Don't you go around and church hop around the city. God has you right here on purpose. For his divine purpose and plan to be lived out through your life. Hey. He said he shall do it right early. Parents, please teach your children. Don't wait for the 15 to start things in their life. You've waited too long. That's right. Start in their life right early. Bring them to Sunday school at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Every child deserves to be in Sunday school. That's right. Right. I think it was I think it was ideal for my life to have a teacher in a classroom and I had to sit and I had to listen, I had to pay attention, I had to be still. Is that not the message today? Be still and know. And know. Yes. And know. Fear of the Lord is what the beginning of wisdom. That's right. And know. I knew from a very early age that who God was. Because I was taught who God was. Yes. I'm here today because I had a godly mother and daddy who did not send me to church. They brought me to church. Amen. So in all of our calamities, in all our, of our maladies of our life, we must know who God is. Right. That I am God. Amen. That I am God. Last and I'm done. That I am God. Listen, verses 9 through 11. Don't you underestimate God. No. The Bible here says he can stop wars. Yep. That's right. Verses 9 through 11. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. Everyone's crying out for peace. But there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked or the lost people. Amen. But he giveth perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Perfect peace comes to those people who found peace and rest from the peace speaker. He can speak peace to your life. You'll know when that peace comes into your uh, life and the presence of God comes into your life and it's just as if, listen, he's right there beside you. Whew. I mean, the holy gush should fall uh, on your life uh, and everything begins to work in, uh, in order. Amen. Do things decently and in order. If your life is chaos and confusion, if your life is ups and downs, and, and it looks like a roller coaster and a lot of drama in your life, be assured that the presence of the Lord is not a million miles from you. When things smooth out, I'm saying, I'm not saying that you won't have trouble waters. I'm not saying that you'll not have storms in your life, but you'll have a peace speaker in your life available, and he can, he can calm the storms. Amen. That's right. That is right. He's done it for my life, and I know he's done it for yes. your life. Amen. Verse number eight. Verse number nine says, He maketh this, these wars to see. Don't, don't that sound inviting? Amen. I don't even like the sound of war to you. Uh-uh. Why is it that we're at odds with one another 
country against country, brother against brother, nation against nation. Isn't that what he said would be going on when he come again? Yes. But yes. notice what our God said. He breaketh the bow. In other words, he knows how to use these things that have been made for warfare. He can turn them into the plowshare. He can make these things into other things. He cut the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. As Pharaoh, how he destroyed all those chariots. And at, at the bottom of the Red Sea, Amen. submarines went down there not long ago, and they found all those chariot wheels. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Yes. God did that. Yes. Lord. All of Israel knew that. And when they got to the other side, those ladies got happy. And they had a timbrel. They had, a, they, they had one of these tambourines in their hand. And they were getting happy in the Lord. They had one of those uh, yeah. Baptist fits right over there on the other side. <laughs> he said, I will be exalted among the heathen. Who are the heathen? The, the lost people. Why do the heathen rage? There's a question we ought to ask ourselves. All those people are making the most noise. All that loud stuff. All those questions that are raised. All that anarchy that's going on in our country. And every, every time you look at the news, that's why I don't look at it. So all these people making a ruckus in our country. Who is it that's doing that? The Bible says, why do the heathen rage? That's Wall Street. And imagine vain things. See, we don't have to do all that because our dependency, we're trusting in the Lord. Amen. We believe in the Lord. Hallelujah. With the Lord comes great confidence. Yes. Great security. Great rest and peace of the soul. Hallelujah. Woo! There's peace like a river here this morning. Yes. Flooding my soul. Don't forget he has brought us through so many times before. And he's going to bring us through again. Amen. Don't forget verse number 8 said that he brought great des desolations in the earth. Think about Sodom and Gomorrah. The lowest place on the planet. I've been there. Nothing grows there. It's so salt and briny. You don't need a float to float on the Dead Sea. It's that thick with salt. God said I did that as an example to let you know. I can destroy your enemy. I can put him out. But listen, Solomon didn't ask for his enemies to be destroyed. When our ways please the Lord, even our enemies are at peace with us. Solomon didn't ask for riches. Solomon just asked for one simple thing. God, give me wisdom. Amen. I think that answered all the problems, didn't it? Yeah. Give us a strong leader that has wisdom, Lord. Let their, Lord, let there emerge from the pack some strong spiritual leader. I'm not talking about a political leader now. Let there be a spiritual leader to unite the forces of God here in this world so that peace can reign in this world. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yeah. Amen. I think I'd shout every day. Amen. <laughs> if I could see something like that in my lifetime, that's what I've been praying for, a revival among God's people. I'm not talking about an ecumenical uh, type of society. I'm not talking about some uh, euphoric uh, lifestyle. No, 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 euphoria. No, I'm not speaking of that. I'm speaking about when God gets in on the scene. Yep. I was in a little town not long ago, and there was a church. It was called United Church, and one church met in the same building one week. The other, one, uh, the other group met in uh, the church the next week. And I thought, <laughs> you know what I thought about? There's got to be unity in that much. And then for revival services, I preached in some churches like this up in the country in Raleigh. And, and for revival services, they all come to the meeting. Both groups. And I thought, man, a lot of people of yesteryear, that, that went back a while, went back away. The people of yesteryear, they had to learn to get along with one another. Growing grace in the knowledge of and, 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 and growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's, for, that's right for relationships between us, is that not? Right. So all these things that God has at his disposal, it makes me want to rest in the Lord. Did you know when it says here that he's the God of Jacob, he's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts there in the Hebrew, that's the God of war. You know why we can take hope and rest in the Lord today? Because he's a great God. He's all powerful. Amen. He can destroy. Listen, when Satan, listen, he sees Satan coming up. Uh, on our back door, on our back steps. And you know what the Bible says that in the book of uh, over there in the book of Malachi, it says there that He will destroy the works of our enemy. He will do that. Praise God. Woo! I'm talking about our God is able. Yes. 
He's a strong and a fortified city. He's our refuge. He's a place we can go to and run to. He's a city of refuge. Now, the city of refuge, if you'll spread that out in the Bible, I, I am almost done. This is a place where uh, people were hunted down for committing uh, acts of self-defense or uh, of accidental death. Uh, of a manslaughter, uh, whatever, and they were hunted for their life and killed because of these things. But in that city, they were safe. That was like a safe haven. That was a place for them to go to. That was a place for their families to go to, and they could not be touched there. Amen. Did you know with God, we're untouchable? Amen. Did you know that we, we shouldn't fear when God's near because, listen, there is no fear Perfect love casteth out all fear. If you're having anxieties, if you're having depressions, if you're having frustration, if you're having all of these phobias that Satan brings, he is the king of fear. Don't you dare let him reign in your hearts. That's right. That's right. No, 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 no. no let the Lord reign in your heart. Yes. God has given you this morning, listen, he's given you and me a second chance, a lease, a second lease in life. We ought to praise the Lord, exonerate him, exalt him. It says here, it says, I will be exalted among the heathen. You say, Pastor, why does your church say amen and praise the Lord? We're to let the heathen know there's power with the Lord. Yes. Amen. We're, to let the, we're to let the nations know. <clears throat> let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've been delivered. From our sins. He has forgiven us. As far as the east is from the west, he remembers our sins no more. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There was a gentleman flying in an airplane over the deepest waters of the South Pacific. The stewardess came on the intercom and she said, and I quote, she said, These are the deepest waters in all the world. The country boy from Mississippi jumped up and said, Woohoo, praise the Lord. That's where God buried my sins down there. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's something to get excited over. <laughs> Don't you make fun of my state of Mississippi either. No, nope, that's right. right. I love it here. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong. God is able to deliver thee. God is able, listen. All God has to do, if you're in a tight this morning, if you're in a terrible situation, if you're going through trouble seas and storms in your life right now, all God has to do is wink at that storm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He'll be right. gone. That's right. God has all power. Amen. I know right in the middle of the storm, it's kind of hard to remember all these things, but I just want to say it again, be still and know Amen. that I am God. He can do whatever That's he right. He's all power. He's Hallelujah. omniscient and he's omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. I'm going to trust in him. How about you? Father in heaven, yeah. thank you for this day. Thank you for these.